For today's best of 2023 episode, we're going to the best deck building. So it's time we're getting the heart of the cards, dice, and whatever other things we can fit into a deck and look at our top winners. So as always, we're going to begin with our runner-ups, and this time we have four runner-ups to our best of three when it comes to deck builders. We want to start things off with Beneath Oressa. Perhaps the most uh, visceral of the deck builders we had a chance to play this year, featuring kind of like comic book cell shading look and vibe to it, with a very heavy emphasis on building yourself out of different factions and trying to make it all work with enemies coming at you from close and far range. This one is certainly a challenging game, and what kind of keeps it off the top of the list is that it didn't really feel balance at the higher levels or higher levels of challenge it's one of those games where you either stumble or luckily get one of the game breaking strategies or you're just not going to be able to scale well enough to deal with the later chapters there are some people who found this game incredibly easy and there's a lot who found it incredibly difficult but it's still a very stylized take on the deck building formula and a recommendation if you're looking for a little flash with your card playing our next runner-up is Crop Rotation. This is a kind of look be the landlord, look be a landlord meets farming challenge. As you must use cards that comprise all different fruits, vegetables, and more in order to build a sustainable and profitable farm season by season. I like the kind of combination of the different styles or the kind of different traits of cards that can lead to synergies. And there's a lot of interconnectivity in terms of what you grow, what items you put down, and also the different challenges and other things you go for. What keeps it off the list or off the top of the list is that it felt like one of those games where it was kind of very easy to solve. Once you knew kind of like the best strategies or what you're trying to achieve, it's just a matter of facilitating that as quickly into a run as possible and then just snowballing it out again and again. There is different progressive difficulty that makes things more challenging, but it's still a very delightful and short and sweet take on the deck builder. For our last two runner-ups, they're both different degrees of complexity when it comes to deck building. We're going to start with Death Roads Tournament. In this one, you are driving cross-country over the ruined wastelands of the United States using your muscle car equipped with guns, traps, lasers, and more in order to win the race. The complexity here is that you not only have to manage where your car is during a match, but also the positioning of your weapons, as well as what shift your car is in, which will affect different conditions on your various cars. Higher shift could mean you'll be able to move faster, maybe a lower shift could let you turn more. There is a lot going on in this game. It reminds me in a little bit of that, I think it was more real-time Convoy, which was the kind of like FTL road roguelike. But this one being turn-based definitely gives it a unique feel to it. As I said, this is not one that's going to be easily learned, but if you do enjoy it and you like your deck building on the more complicated side, then this is still a very solid pick. It's being about complicated designs. Our last runner up is Astrea, Six Sided Oracles. So what we have here is a dice builder, not so much a deck builder, as you must use the power of dice in order to free corrupted individuals from a malevolent force. This one goes for a lot of depth and complexity into the rules. You have basically light heart points, and as you take more corruption damage, it lets you kind of use special powers. But if you take too much, then you actually lose a heart point. You run out of heart points, your run is over. The different dice have complexities based on what sides they will come with. Many of the stronger dice will have negative sides that can very much screw you over if you're not too careful in terms of luck. There are ways of mitigating this, getting additional perks, you can get some pets and followers who can help you out, and of course there's unlocking new features and characters and all that good stuff. Like Death Roads, this is not an easy game to learn. There's a lot going on here in terms of the different interactions, your different powers, 
and it can be a little hard to like look at this and understand what is happening. Similar to that of Beneath Oressa, part of the challenge of this game is that the enemies and their kind of overall power levels tend to scale faster than yours. If you're not already ahead of the curve, it's very easy to fall behind, and this is compounded by the fact that many of the enemies will have ramp up abilities. The longer the match goes, they'll start doing more and more damage. So even if you do get really good dice and a really good game plan, if you're not doing it fast enough, there's not much you can do to compensate when the enemy just like whacks you and knocks out your health points one turn at a time. But again, if you're looking for a very involved and very in-depth deck builder, then you should definitely check out Astrea. For the top three, they couldn't really be much further apart in terms of their design and aesthetics when it comes to deck building. And we'll start things off with Maho Kenshi. This is a deck builder that takes place on a hex based map. And it's kind of more of a RPG deck builder rather than being a roguelike. You're trying to stop evil demons from invading and you must use the power of your cards and your various ninja related abilities in order to save the day. What makes this one stand out is that unlike a lot of the other deck builders where combat takes place on its own unique grid or field, this one takes place entirely on the world map. So your movement cards literally move you around the map Attack cards will come with different ranges, conditionals, and all that. There are different characters who specialize in different strategies, such as like stealth and backstabbing, more just direct damage, buffs, heals, and so on. And your challenge is that you must use the layout of the map to your advantage, such as moving two tiles that have higher defensive in order to block a hit. You can fly over if you get the right cards. There are unlocks in terms of each kind of character slash class having like a perk tree. And there is certainly a lot of variety here along with some gorgeous aesthetics and card art. It is a very interesting game to play. I wouldn't say this is overly complicated, but it can throw you for a loop if you're not used to the kind of, I guess, more like active movement and field exploration compared to some of the other deck builders on this list. But Maho Kenji is a solid recommendation from me. We now go from demons and magic to something a little bit more hardcore and metal. For the next pick, it is Power Chord. This one combines like Slay the Spire with the metal aesthetic of Brutal Legend. It's up to your band to defeat evil metal goblins, demons, and more from hell that are trying to invade the earth. And you must use the power of your own metal and lots of artifacts and cards to do so. Your band is made up of different group members, and each one is kind of a class onto themselves. You can have different variations of them that you unlock through play, but you still need a full crew in order to go rocking. You'll need to balance your overall energy for each round with the different rules and cards you draw from each one of your characters. One uh, class the can bring more defensive cards, you may have a poisoner slash the buffer. And to add even more complexity, there's a variety of artifacts that you can decide who gets what. And this can lead to combinations such as something where if you take damage or you lose health, you draw additional cards. But if someone draws additional cards, maybe you can do more damage. And you'll need to balance your own roles with your band with the different roles and enemy types that you'll deal with. This one is on the challenging side just because there is a lot going on and the fact that you're always going to be having to balance four different decks of cards and rules and mechanics, but really enjoy the aesthetics and it's a very great game again for someone who's looking to rock out with their deck building. And last but not least, for best of deck building, we turn to Cobalt Core. This is more on the wholesome space exploration side where you and your crew are trapped in a time loop. You must use the power of friendship and cards in order to get out. Of the list this year, Cobalt Core is probably the easiest one to learn. You have your spaceship that can move around and different guns and weapons are set up that you're trying to line up with your enemy while they're doing the same to you. Each crew member is a class onto themselves and you'll find both neutral and character specific cards as you go throughout. As you also explore, you'll gain artifacts that are both, again, neutral or character specific, and this can all lead to, of course, the ever-popular snowball effect. 
where something that grants you shields could also grant you energy every time you get shields, and every time you lose shields, something else happens, and things can go completely off the rails from there. At its base level, Cobalt Core is definitely the easiest game, not, in terms, not only in terms of learning it, but also in terms of playing it. On our first run on stream, we beat the whole thing in one fell swoop. But there is added difficulty and unlocks, especially if you're trying to go for the game's true ending, which does require multiple plays. This is a fantastic deck builder that also serves as a really great kind of first-timer game, but still has some bite to it if you're looking for the challenge. And is, once again, another really great recommendation. All three of the games this time have been really solid in terms of being very unique takes on deck building gameplay. And with that, we're wrapping up Deck Builder. So, did you have a favorite deck building game of your own that came out this year? Let me know in the comments down below. We'll be back with another part. We are slowly but surely getting to the end. There's only a few biggies left. But with that said, everyone, have a great rest of your night and see you next time. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to do the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my books wherever they are sold. Visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for detailed discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where you some of the art and science of games.